Hey guys, and welcome back to Sonic Unleashed. We've had a lot of fun in Rooftop Run. Yeah, a bit of a rhyme to kick off a part with. <laughs> but sadly, all good things must come to an end. So it's time to go from day to night. And yes, Richie, I hear you groaning there. But you know, you cannot have one without the other. You cannot have peanut butter without the jelly. You cannot have, like, Sonic without the fast. Unless you're playing, like, Sonic Labyrinth or something. And you cannot have day without the night. Yes, but, I mean, I have to say, like, it's not that I don't enjoy the night stages in Sonic Unleashed. They are quite fun, um, and I probably like them more than the general populace liked the night stages, because obviously they were pretty damned on the whole. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, it, 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 so my issue with them is not that they are unfun or anything, it's just that they end up lasting a little over long. Uh-huh. Like, over 10 minutes is not ideal for a Sonic level. I mean, it doesn't feel as bad as, say, Hang Castle and Mystic Mansion in Sonic Heroes. Uh -huh. Those were awful in terms of their length, because they are fast-paced Sonic levels. Yeah, So yeah. 10 minutes, you're just like, for God's sake, end. Oh my god, don't even get me started on, like, Team Dark's version of them. Oh, I know. So, like, 10, 15 minutes for the night stage isn't bad, but... They often, towards the end of the game, start going over that, and then you just like, just, just end, please. This was fun to begin with, and now I'm just like, just, just, just stop. Fair enough, please. mate. Fair enough. Like, I think Holoska Weed does a lot of good things with, um, you know, the nighttime stage. Like, look, you start in the village itself here, which is pretty cool. Mm. But unfortunately, the nighttime music for Call Edge. You know, night. Bit of a redundant sentence, but roll of it, roll of it. Is not that great, and it just reminds me a little bit of the Wizard of Oz. You know, the old we oh, we oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't get that. I think this song's okay. Like, it's not the most memorable of the night stages. There's far more that I'd rather just sort of, you know, listen to as a bit of a groove. This, you know, it's just a bit safe. Mm, yeah, yeah. So walk us through the Wii version of Cool Edge Night. Flame, you know, your recording experience, your personal like likes and dislikes of the thing compared to HD. What's the down low? Uh, well, in terms of recording, this was my, most of my res resets were for reasons rather than for actual reasons. <laughs> oh, reasons <laughs> with quotation marks emblazoned around them. <laughs> yeah, but in terms of how it's actually structured, again, it's another night stage where there's three different ones. This is one thing I should probably clarify from some of our earlier parts. We sort of accidentally exaggerated a little bit. There's only actually one level tomorrow collection where there's five. Uh -huh. Like there's a few four ones up later towards the end, but for the most part they are like three night stages to one like, you know, day or whatever. Uh -huh. But like yeah, this the first one here is a pretty simple introductory thing to the idea of a nice level. Yeah. Then we get one that's Sort of similar, but feels a little bit more raw, cold experience. And then after that, we go into the temple, which is quite a bit different from what I remember. Mm, yeah. Although, like, granted, the Wii one does have more outside sections than the HD one. I kind of like that, actually. Like, especially since you get to see the night sky and whatnot. And uh, the skybox for, you know, Holoska looks amazing here. Yeah? It's one thing that I always get a little bit cautious of when nights, or not night, when ice levels go inside for a lot of it, because it can be the harsh contrast between a wide open, cool looking area to a boring, cold area. I know that's just using words to sound more pretentious, but that's why I do. Well, you know, <laughs> I've done commentary for long enough that I know what you mean. The, the viewing audience, maybe not so much, but eh, they're not doing the commentary with you, so it's fine. So throwing back to what I was saying in the earlier part, you notice how the end is in that cave. That cave is our particular destination. <laughs> okay, cool. Now uh, onto Ice Flow. And this one, I think it took me a little while because like, there's an upper route and a lower route with an upper route that's kind of fiddly to get to. So I think I did just give up on that at one point. But, you know. ah, an upper route that's like hard to get to and hard to stay on. That's uh, that's sort of classic Sonic in a sense. Well, it, in this case, it's more that them little grabby things, one of the later parts, it 
doesn't really give you the best angle to jump from and get that. Ah, uh, the platforming camera issues, yeah, that plagues both versions of the game, unfortunately. But it does look really nice, and although that snow effect is obviously a very basic brush sort of thing that they're repeating, <laughs> it does complement the level well. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh my god, damn it, I had a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the more obvious battle arenas right here. You know, you've got like the Polywell robots shooting ice and whatnot, and these red guys coming at you. Can you use these things against the enemies? Because if memory serves me, you can. I think so. I prefer to just go up behind them and smash them. It's just much quicker. Ah, okay. Flame likes to come in from behind and smash. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you are becoming me with this. Like, I, I've been quite tame with the imagery. This is the jump I'm on the bat, by the way, to keep us some task. <laughs> Ooh, that is nasty. I got it. I think I might fall down after a little bit here. Because you see, like, this is a, a very obvious two-route path, isn't it? Yeah, I think this is where like, it starts to showcase the weakness of having your run be assigned to you know a double tap of the uh, the joystick or analog stick instead of a button you know mm, and it's one of these things that like the classic controller pro in itself it's not the most con comfortable controller to hold on to so you got that you got it slipping in the analog stick is not not got the best grip on it so <laughs> like just if you see a tightly packed section, just don't try to run. It's slower to walk around like this, but, you know, it saves you dying. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I didn't actually... I don't think we've brought up that the controls if you're using a GameCube controller. Because on the Classic Controller Pro, the fighting is actually okay. You use the X and Y buttons as your left and right attack, and you use the A button as, like, your upward, like, uppercut. Whereas, I have heard stories of people trying to play this on the GameCube controller and apparently the left and right triggers are your punches. Ooh. Um, why they would think to do that, I don't know, because I can imagine that really doing your fingers in after a while. Like, three levels straight of combat with that and that must start to ache. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see why they'd go for, like, triggers for your, uh, you know, punches and whatnot. You know, Simulate the werehog's arms, you know, a selling point you can put on the back of the box. But, uh, <laughs> you know, um, better in theory than in practice, I suppose. This little set piece here is uh, similar to one uh, we'll see, like, inside the cave area of the HD version of Cool Edge Night. But uh, since it's outside, it's much better, because we get the lovely sky, unfortunately we get these things, that's a mark off it, I guess. Destructible platforms, or, you know, icebergs or ice structures, boxes to throw, things to destroy, rings in the distance. Since it's all there, 0 out of 10 multiplied by 10, that gets you, well, 0, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, you were going somewhere with that, I didn't notice. Yeah, serious maths <laughs> on the fly, my friend. I wouldn't fall like that on the snow, that looks like it'd be really uncomfortable, especially when you got fur that won't dry off. Mm, the Temple of Ice. Mm, this is actually a pretty cool level. Not trying to play it up. I know, there are some I know, really. Yeah. <laughs> I just become really aware of that whenever we go into a fucking ice level. <laughs> well, you know, it's the curse of the commentator, I suppose. This is like, this is a really, I don't want to say like, not very Sonic-y sort of level, but it strikes me as something you'd see in another platform game, like maybe a Prince of Persia style thing. And you know, swinging from you know beam to beam is inherently Prince of Persia, or at least from the Sands of Time trilogy. Anyway, it's a comparison you can't really escape, and I doubt that's what they were going for. Like uh, Flame and others have mentioned, it feels more Rystar than anything just in 3D, but uh, eh, I'm not complaining, it's one of my favourite parts of the world platforming. I mean, I have to say, looking at the design of this particular level, it's reminding me very much of Tomb Raider, at least older school Tomb Raider, i.e. the classic trilogy and the original Crystal Dynamics trilogy. Uh-huh. I mean, it's particularly reminding me of the original Crystal Dynamics trilogy because that had a good few locations in um, Tomb Raider Underworld which had this stone and neon blue aesthetic going on. And it was one that I, I really did quite like. Wasn't there like an icy section, like an inside ice section that sort of like this in God of War 2? I don't remember much of it, I swear I remember you guys going through a level like that. There was like the caves where we met 
I think it was Typhon, I believe. You know, yes, 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 with his breath that blew you off like the platforms and whatnot. Sort of similar to that, I suppose, but, you know, with a lot less neon, because uh, they weren't really into neon back in ye old ancient Greek gods' times. No, they were more into fucking animals, incest, killing people, you know, that sort of stuff. Because it's, it's perfectly normal. Because, I mean, that, that, that's just that's just what you do. I mean, you see a swan, you just have to have sex with it, clearly. <laughs> Richie, please, no. <laughs> I thought we could silently move on from that fucking horror story of a topic. Jesus. No, I, I sure hope that no one links that audio file out of context. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be terrible. Oh, we got another collect the keys section moving hastily on from that. And we move deeper on into the temple. Like, granted, this is another one of these parts where if you know where to go, there's a lot of shit to ignore. Most of that is just like, you know, the little power-ups that fill up here. Smashy gauge. Unleashed gauge. That's the one. The one that I should know, given it's in the title of the fucking game, but... <laughs> Alright, now this is a God of War style arena, right? Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like you've got this big, huge open space after a long corridor. I wonder what we're going to do in this part. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the first sort of style of beat em up that comes to mind is God of War. You know, it's Hell Dragon bitched about back in the day, but it's been so long since, like, the original and 2 came out, and it's been so over, like, I, I can't think of any, like, really famous ones that come to mind, but there's been loads of, like, shovelware ones, to say the least, that have come out. So it's not just God of War anymore, it's God of War Light, then God of War Extra Light, I can't believe it's not God of War, and so on and so forth. <laughs> You know that feeling when you're trying to keep a joke alive after it's probably died? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah, that describes my entire commentary career, really. Career in heavy quotation marks. That <laughs> uh, sure is a serious adult job you got there. <laughs> mm. I kind of like the quiet, you know, empty sections that you run down as the werehog in uh, this version of the game. I don't know, it's just like... You've, you've defeated everyone in the level, aha, and now it's time for a break, and then we go straight on to the HD version so you don't have to contemplate my stupid, um, pathetic <laughs> uh, topic that I was, like, navel-gazing about back then. This is a level that goes on far too long. This is where it sort of creeps in what Richie was talking about earlier in the park, because I will say ahead of time, even though I'm completely maxed out, this is still going to take about 11 minutes. Yeah. It is around this point in the game that the night stages do just start to get longer and longer and longer, and it is where they do start, to, you just start to get tired of them, if you hadn't already, because it is just going on and on and on with walking platforming. Da -da 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 yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 go, I'll meet you halfway, shall we say. There's parts of Call Edge Night that I enjoy, for sure. Oh, definitely. But as a whole... <sighs> Visually, it's not enough to interest me. Even the platforming that I find fun gets old after a while, and there's just too much tedious battling at this point. And uh, these little icicle things have Silver's hair for some reason. Don't know why I suddenly caught on to that, but uh, I doubt that's what they were going for. I'm just an idiot. To be fair, I'm just happy that there's penguins in the background. They're what's making me smile. Although, I have to, like... Looking at the way the Wii version did its colours, I really liked that it went for like ultra starry, more purpley sky with the Aurora Borealis. Yeah. Whereas this has gone like really dark, which I mean, to be fair, is probably slightly more accurate. Like, this is the middle of the night. It's not going to be incredibly, well, necessarily incredibly colourful, but. It would have just lifted the level's spirit a little bit more, I feel, if you had that slightly prettier skybox. I think that's the problem with the night levels. And, we, you know, we've talked about this numerous times, uh, you know, just visuals and the like. But I like night levels with a bit of pop to them. You know, enhance it with neon, like, you know, the Wii version of Call Edge Night did, or just some really cool set pieces. And uh, the HD version of Call Edge Night gets the set pieces bit correctly. But uh, mm. much like with, you know, like... And Dragon Road Day, uh, if you'll allow me a kind of bizarre comparison, it feels a bit drab in its coloration. Yes. I think this is a bit of a trend I've noticed that 
goes between like the jump from standard def to H, like to high def, and it's that like in the past with games because you have less detail to work with, and if you try to do anything clever with the coloration, it starts to look muddy and generally horrible. Like a lot of game artists would lean towards brighter, more vivid colours just so the colour is distinct there. But once you start putting in more detail, it's like, it's not necessarily bad, it's a different approach to it, but it, I can see why you might start to miss having the like really bright thing. And you know it's like, like with some HD remasters, like from say, mm. say like PS1 games and shit, like I remember seeing some people talking a little while back about even like not even to a HD thing, but a more detailed in purple of Klonoa. Uh -huh. I saw screen caps from the PlayStation version where there are these really bright colours, and then there's like this slightly more muted. I think it's the Weeble, and like it, it like the colour itself, it's there, but it's not as bright because they've got more shading. They've got more like detail in the textures, and it's just something that gets a little bit lost in translation. Mm. I think we've reached the part where we must go to other websites for content and the, and the like. <laughs> so while we're in an icy area, let's discuss levels with a winter theme and the like. So let me just bop on over to Sonic Retro. Uh, we have, you can just give like a yay or a nay if you even remember this, uh, Aurora Icefield from Sonic the Fighters. Uh, yes, I remember how overly fucking shiny the floor is in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, Blizzard Castle from Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. I think that was brought back and transformed as well. I can't remember that one off the top of my head, although I do like All-Stars Racing. So. Yeah, yeah, really tight turns in that stage from what I'm recalling. That was obviously Billy Hatch's stage, another Sonic team game. Oh yes, I do remember that. There track. you go, there yeah. you go. Uh, Blizzard Peaks from Sonic Rush Adventure. Okay, stage. Don't remember too much from it, but it's got picture music. Yeah, yeah. Cool Edge. Never heard of it. Uh, no, at this level, obviously. Crystal Mountain Zone from Flame's favourite Sonic game, Sonic Rivals. Actually, that does look quite pretty. Like, I know it's a PSP game and it's got the same sort of limitations as, say, the Wii version of this, but. I like how that level looks. Mm, fair enough, fair enough. And Rivals isn't that bad. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can record those and we'll, you know, cover them at a later day, I suppose. Maybe give you our Rivals 1 and 2 mega commentary. Uh, let's see. Diamond Dust Zone, a particular favourite of mine, if just for the music alone. And uh, it just gives you a nice chilly feeling. So it does. Uh, Frozen Factory from Sonic Lost World. I don't like it, no. Ooh, no. Like slash love the music, level design, not that great. Ice Cap from Sonic Adventure. Uh, it's I, sort of, I like it. It's sort of a lesser version of Ice Cap Zone, but I enjoy it. You know, be cool, be wild, be groovy. Uh, you've got Ice Cap from Sonic Drift 2. It's a racing stage, what else can you say? Ice Mountain Zone from Sonic Advance. I actually like that stage a lot, like level design, music wise. It's all good. In fact, I, I think I can still remember exactly where the special stage spring is in that. <gasps> oh, flame. I don't know how I survived that, but that was such a luck thing. I just went with it, you know? <laughs> I'll catch it when when I'm editing stuff, because I was, you know, perusing Sonic Retro at the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that was ridiculously clutch, flame. Ice Paradise from Advance 2, we've covered that, so you go check that playthrough for our opinions, I guess. The OG... Ice Cap Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Oh, it's beautiful. Ooh. It's beautiful. Uh, Icy Isle from Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't know yeah, if we'll... It looks okay, but just generic. And, you know, roll the ball control, so, yeah. Mountain Zone. The amazingly titled Mountain Zone from Sonic Jump. Yeah. Robotnik Winter Zone from Sonic Triple Trouble. Look out for our collection of Mass System slash Game Gear Sonic comms at a later date. We'll go into detail there. Then you have Snow Valley from Riders, Snowy Kingdom from Zero Gravity, Twinkle Snow from Advance 3, White Acropolis from 06, and White Park Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 2. See, White Park, I like the roller coaster one, but that's more park than white. Whereas the ones that are more in the icy areas, they just look boring. Like, particularly the inside parts. Mm, I suppose so. And, uh, you know, Sonic 4, Flame, yes? 
recording, please. Um. <laughs> you want to do that game? Okay. <laughs> oh, you know, I want you to get all the emeralds and whatnot, so uh, in- enjoy the bumpers and whatnot and the physics and the special stages. Um, how about no? <laughs> <laughs> Flames are Sonic recording, bitch, if it wasn't obvious <laughs> by now. <laughs> but just to show how benevolent of a team leader I am, I'm not going to make him record secret rings. Black Knight he can do. I'll handle yeah, secret rings. Yeah, I've got rings. dibs on Black Knight. I love Black Knight. Well, fair enough, mate. Fair <laughs> enough, you know. If there's a game you really don't want to record, I'm not going to force you to record it, especially since you're, like, what, a slave at this point? <laughs> Uh, to be fair, pretty much all these like runs we've done, I've just done. It's not like you've asked me to, I've just done it. Fair enough, you know, you just record them in your free time, really. Yeah. Okay, I think we're nearing the end of the level now, at least I hope so, because Jesus, this level's gone for quite a bit. Um, I believe we are, y- yes we are, because we're at the slidey bit now, and then I think after the slidey bit, there's the gauntlet at the end, and then it's done. Mm, the run killer slides. But then annoyingly, we have the boss that's going to be coming. Like, if you didn't like Cool Edge Knight, you'll probably like the boss even less. Oh my god, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Do you guys have any fond memories of ice levels in Sonic games that we didn't cover in that little Sonic Retro spiel back there? Richie, gonna start with you, mate. Um, not that I can actually remember, because as most people will probably figure out, the only real Sonic games that I have ever played are the 3D ones, which does begin to severely limit what I have actually experienced in terms of Sonic. And you going through that list was just like, nope, I haven't played that one, I haven't played that one. Oh, good lord, I haven't played that much Sonic. <laughs> I have, but it's just the time frames in which they've happened. Um, so, really, my only ice level memory in a Sonic game is Cool Edge. Hmm. Because that, well, it's Cool Edge and Frozen Factory, those are it, basically. So, I, I'm probably not the best person for this. This conversation topic. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Man, they could have gone like the whole hog and not given these platforms grabbable edges, you know? They could have, but I would have hated this level even more. Yeah, this is a, a really. I don't even want to say tricky, it's just not particularly pleasant bit of platforming. There's too much tension here, I think, especially since it's not the last level in the game. And it's one of the things where there's too much to pay attention to at once. You've got these slippery physics, you've got these things falling, and you've got the next thing you've got to grab onto. It's a lot to take in in one hit. Mm, yeah, I suppose so. And also the fact that everything will fall once you've landed on it. So it you are so limited in time as to how you respond, and you're kind of just like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing! <laughs> We're almost there, fam. We're almost there. Patience will reward us with a really obnoxiously unfun boss. I don't want to call this the low point of Sonic Unleashed, but I specifically remember when I was playing through the game, whether it be on stream or just in my own time, I'd be like, alright, time to do the night portion of Cool Edge. I'd much rather be going through the day version, uh, and that usually would be an opinion that carries across to the rest of the game, but uh, this is just... I'd probably say this is my least favourite night stage in the game. You know, like even Chunan, for all its, you know, blandness, at least has some, uh, you know, interesting set pieces and the like. And while there are some good platforming bits here and there, it doesn't really make up for the fact that it's very obnoxious and do or die sort of platforming. Yeah, I mean, part of me dislikes Arid Sands Night. About the same, well, actually more because there's some more annoying combat encounters in that level. Uh huh. But yeah, I would probably agree that this is sort of the point of the game where you just sort of go and oh, because you've just had the massive high of Rooftop One Day and Dragon Road Day, and then you go straight into a not necessarily great night level so I suppose the contrast is much stronger so it, this level probably seems worse than it is because it's come after two of the better levels in the game. Yeah for sure. I think this should have been segmented. I think this is about like, all the Warthog levels but I kind of get halfway through this and think oh, can I do the rest later? <laughs> it's just it kind of bores you after like halfway through it I reckon. <laughs> it's done thank god.
That was an S rank run with everything maxed out. 11.15 minutes. Yeah. It would have probably been like maybe 10 and a half if I hadn't had that one stupid falling off thing, but you know, that's still overkill. Alright. Dark Moray, here we go. When the moon hits your eye, like a big pizza pie. That was my joke all that years ago. Thank you, good night. I know. <laughs> I don't think that one was yours, actually, but... Eh. No, it was my joke. I gave it to FDA, okay? That was a retake. Are you implying that Hellfire Comms is scripted and fake? <laughs> Shut the fuck off, Flame. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Take it away, Flame. Uh, what is there to say other than like maybe sleep for the rest of the part? Holy shit, he, is that just the camera making him seem ten times bigger than he usually is? It's not the most flattering angle for him, admittedly, because it just... I like how the first shot you see of him, it's just zoomed in on his giant fucking ugly wolf thing. Yeah. The general idea is the same for both. You want to knock out the parts on the side. Like, in this, it's these little generator tubes. In the HD one, it's like enemies. But you do the, you do the shit down here, then you go up to him, you freeze him, and then you attack him. It gets more fiddly as it goes on. Well, I mean, the reason it gets more fiddly as it goes along in both versions is it depends entirely upon which buttons on him you hit because, like, the one on his head is definitely the most difficult to reach. Uh -huh. So, it can just get really, really, really faffy. Yeah, I, I suppose you could try and freeze him in a manner, you know, try and fake him out so he gets his head down to the ground, and you take out that one first and just make the job easier for you, but this is... Like, at least the Dark Gaia Phoenix looked interesting. You know, we're basically fighting a pissed off eel here, and I don't fuck with eels at the best sometimes, you know? <laughs> you describing how to do it, that is all in theory, because then he gets these other ice spikes that can obscure where the little freezer can things land, oh. and you have to fight your way through while he's still shooting shit at you, by the way. Mm. So you can get frozen trying to unfreeze the thing to use to freeze him, and it just becomes like a clusterfuck of everything hitting you, and not really much you can do to avoid it. Disgusting. I mean, I suppose in some ways the uh, HD version does a better job of allowing you to know where the ice canisters are, because they are just located at the edge of the little circular platform, but then uh, I'm pretty sure that the uh, Dark Moray ends up doing some pretty awful things to prevent you from actually dealing with them properly anyway. So even though it's easy to spot where the things are, it doesn't make it any easier to freeze the blighter. Now it's, the game's just rubbing it in of how annoying it can be, just by having them little bee enemies flying around me. Like, I don't need to get them out of the way, but they're there, and I've had experiences with them, so fuck them. <laughs> Not they're even in the stage clear thing. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> yeah, they're always there. Like they just hover over you at night. <laughs> oh, and now we get to see the prettier version of that particular boss fight because Flame hates us and he hates you as well, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how during the exciting parts of both level, both games, it's our idea. When it's the boring part, it's <laughs> Flame's idea. <laughs> well, you know, you're the one who put everything together, so I'll just call you the flaming scapegoat from now on. Yeah, I can roll with that, admittedly. <laughs> you're frozen, Sonic. Thank you, Chip, for pointing out the obvious. <laughs> no, I'm frozen. Oh, shit, I didn't realise from all this ice around me. Thanks for telling me, Chip. Uh, there seems to be a lot more busy work in the HD version of this. Like, you have to break the ice on the things to begin with. Then you have to, like, throw them at uh, his little babies that seem to have Kyogre's colouring scheme on them with the dark red and, like, well, the dark blue and the neon red. And then you got to take him out like this. He did a lot of damage there, to be fair. But, uh, eh, just a few more minutes and we'll be done with this nightmare. Yay! I, mean, I, th I think one of the other reasons why this fight ends up being just like really blah is just it, it is the design like he just looks really really derpy and he doesn't feel threatening in the slightest not particularly it's just a really dull daft design and match that with a fight that's just like eh it just does not make for a decent boss fight 
at all. I think we've said basically everything that needs to be said at this point, so let's put the finishing touches on this bitch so we can move on to the next part and stop being such negative Nancy's. Finishing touches, you mean another whole cycle, then? <laughs> mm -hmm. Part of what makes it more fiddly if you're trying to aim for the higher parts of him is that the upward uppercut is just one button in the Wii version, whereas here it's like a sort of combo thing. At least to my recollection, so it's like, mm. you know, you've got to be that little bit more clever while all this other stuff's going on, rather than just press A. Also, fuck this last cycle. <laughs> oh god, yeah. That's how I had to destroy that thing for the thing I'm not going to use, just so I could move. Oh. Mm. Come on, put your head down so we can finish this charade. <laughs> That'll do- <laughs> fuck off. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, mate, you sort of, we get it, you don't like us. Okay, die already. Well, you know, would you allow someone to murder you, Flame? Um, well... <laughs> <laughs> Just the hesitance on that, my god, man, see a therapist. Uh, well, I am sort of fighting Dark Mori, so... <laughs> Fair enough. Oh yeah, another point on the shit list for him. He dies really slowly as well, just to add insult to injury. Oh god, just it's just like, just go. Decease already. Yeah, yeah. So, in closing, there's a lot of cool platforming uh, and uh, set pieces, especially in the Wii version of Call Edge Night, but sadly the HD version lets down the side. And uh, Dark Moray, eh? more like Dark Bore, eh? <laughs> <laughs> this is how much this channel has improved over the eight years. <laughs> <laughs> At least we show visual and, you know, audio improvements. You know, HD and commentary. Indeed. You can hear our bullshit in HD. Ah, beautiful. The planet is one step closer to being completely rebuilt. We'll see you next time for more Sonic Unleashed.